Hi class, welcome to chapter 1.12. Today we're going to talk about modeling variation. Okay, so whenever we're trying to model natural phenomena, we often relate one variable to another by talking about how the change in one variable is going to affect the change in the other variables that are present. Okay, um, so we generally say that variables change directly as another variable changes. Um, meaning that as one gets larger, so does the other, right? Or if one gets smaller, then so does the other, okay? So this is not normally in a one-to-one -one sense, whereas like if the variable x increases by one, then y also increases by one. Normally, it differs by a constant multiple, okay? So <clears throat> this constant multiple we call k, right? k is also called the constant of proportionality, right? So as y as x gets larger, so does y, and it varies directly. However, let's say that this is one half, right? If x goes from five to ten, or let's say from ten to twenty, y only increases in amount by a value of five, not also by a value of ten like x did, right? It grows half as fast as the changes in x grow. So the variables can change inversely as well, right? So here they vary directly. So as x gets bigger, y gets bigger. Inversely means the opposite, right? As x gets bigger, y will get smaller, okay? Or as one gets smaller, the other gets bigger, right? So if these are both on the same line, as far as fractions go, right? These are both in a numerator position, I would assume. Um, we still have this constant pro proportionality However, x needs to be a reciprocal and needs to move down to the denominator, okay? So <clears throat> this is probably the harder thing for students to kind of grasp, but as x gets large, y gets small. So let's think about a small x, right, or a decent size x. If x is 1, we have 1 over 1, okay? y would be 1 or k times 1, just k in that case, right? If I make x larger, let's say it's 2, right? I now have half of k, so x being larger makes y smaller. Let's say I go to the extreme and say x is a thousand. This is one over a thousand. That's a very small amount. That is one one thousandth, right? So as x gets very large, y gets very small. And we can do it in the opposite direction. If y becomes very small, y becomes very large. If this is one divided by 0 .00001, this is actually a very large number, okay? We actually have an example, so let's go through this, right? So when we're creating these models, we're normally given an input and an output value, which allows us to find the value of k, right? So let's go ahead and do an example. So <clears throat> magnetism is an example of a model that exhibits inverse proportionality, okay? So gravity also exhibits this inverse proportionality, so does pressure um, and luminosity, among many others, right? So the closer two magnets are to each other, right, the smaller the distance between them, the greater the effect of magnetism of attraction can be felt, right? So this is inverse proportionality. Very, very, very small distance between them means a very large attraction, right? However, if you have, hold two magnets very far apart, the attraction between them it's pretty much zero. You feel no attraction between them, right? So this is an, an, uh, an example of inverse proportionality, okay? So the way that we say this is that the inverse, that the magnetic force between them is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, okay? So that means that we have a square, squared value, right? So if they're very, very close, that value, the distance between them is squared, which means it's even stronger together, okay, the, the attractive force. So again, meaning that the closer the two magnets are, the stronger the force between them, right? And again, this is also true with, with gravity. So if two very massive things are very, very close. The force of attractiveness is extremely large, right? So this is the actual equation um, for magnetic attractiveness, the force of attraction between two magnets, okay? So <clears throat> here, the k value, the constant proportionality is mu, right? This fancy looking u is actually called mu, like mu tube from Pokemon, 
okay? It's mu over 4 pi. 4 is a constant, pi is a constant, mu here represents a constant as well. So if we pull all the constants out, right, then that constant of proportionality is mu over 4 pi. Mu is called the perme permeability of the, of the medium, okay? So in regular air, there's a permeability constant, okay? If you go into outer space, you have a different permeability constant. It's not that different. If you go into water, okay, you're in a new medium now. Now you have water in between your magnets, so you have to work between those, right, because water molecule molecules have um, a magnetic charge as well. Um, and so you have a different permeability medium. If you put it into um, like a battery, for instance, right, you are now in an acidic medium. There is um, this extra stuff that's going on there too, right? That's we we don't need to talk about that right now. But when you take a, a physics class or a chem class, you can talk about those as well. Okay, each qi is the charge of each magnet, right? So here i can be one or i can be two. It's just saying that for or any randomly picked um, magnet that you have. Okay, r is the distance between the magnets. Okay, so notice that as r becomes small, it the value of f becomes very, very, very large, right? The value of 1 over r squared becomes large, and it grows very quickly because it's 1 over an exponential term. Okay, so the attraction between the magnets increases as the distance between them gets smaller. So, for example, if r is a very, very, very small number, right, 0. 0, 0, 0, 1. so this is what tens place hundreds thousands this is one in the ten thousandths place so that's one over ten thousandths right so r squared would be one over this very small value squared which is equal to one over one over ten thousandth squaring that is the same as ten thousand squared right so remember you um, multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator so that turns into 1 times 10,000, so that's 10,000. Squaring that gives us 100 million, okay? So 1 over a very small distance squared is a very, very large attraction value, okay? And that's not to mention including the values of the proportionality constant or the Q1, Q2, the charges between them, okay? But having a very small number on here, We'll take whatever this k is and whatever this q1 times q2 is, and it will multiply it times a hundred million, right? So that will be a very, very large value of attractive force. All right, so let's do an example. So y varies directly proportional to x. When y equals 3, then x is 5. We want to find the model and the value of y when x equals 1 over 6. So again, this is pretty much a word problem, right? However, there's no actual applications here, um, but it would be nice to read this through a couple times, right? So y varies directly proportional to x. So we know that that is a keyword to us from uh, the beginning of the section. That looks like y equals kx, right? That's what it means to be directly proportional. It's telling us that when y is three, x is 5. So if we plug those in, we know everything except for one thing, my k. So that will allow me to solve for my value of k. Okay. So 3 equals 5 times k. Solve for k. k is 3 fifths. So now I have a model, which is y equals 3 fifths k. And it's giving me another value now. It's telling me what happens when x is 1 over 6. So all I need to do is plug in 1 over 6 here. Right. Here the 3 and the 6 cancel to a 1 half, so this is really 1 over 10. And that's it. That was the question. I create the model from the information I was given. Once I have my model, I plug in the value that it's asking me to plug in, and I solve for the value it's asking me to solve for. A variable can vary proportionally to more than one other variable, Okay, meaning it, it can vary directly to one variable and uh, inversely to another variable, right? Or it can have like 10 variables that it uh, varies with.
Okay, we call this joint variation. When there's more than one variable present that are in the that are dependent variable um, varies in proportion to basically, right? So an example, <clears throat> say that y varies jointly as a and b, and inversely to the cube of c. So again, y varies directly as a. So if a gets larger, y gets larger. If b gets larger, y gets larger. If c gets larger, then y gets smaller. Okay, there is always only one constant of proportionality. Okay, we never have more than one. We always have one for each situ situation. Okay, so if we want to make this model, it looks like the following. One constant proportionality, A and B in the numerator, C cubed in the denominator. Okay, the cube of C means that C is cubed in the denominator. Now, if I were to ask you questions like I would for the first one, it would be the same thing. I would say, hey, um, y equals this when a, b, and c equal this. What does y equal when a, b, and c equals this value? Okay, it's the same exact thing. It's just that there's more variables present. Okay, and that's it. That's the end of our section for today. See you guys uh, in the next video when we start chapter two.